today we are going to talk about a very very important and an interesting topic of diabetes now normally when we talk about diabetes in children we always talk about type 1 as a primary focus but today what we're going to do is that we'll discuss about six cases who presented like type 1 diabetes were managed with insulin at one point or the other but ultimately they had something interesting in them as to some of them might we are able to switch over to a particular oral medication in some cases we were able to look at more complications other issues so this is the importance of how we go beyond type 1 diabetes and this is what we're going to discuss about today we've got six interesting cases which will be covered uh, sequentially covering the entire range of non type 1 pediatric and adolescent uh, picture in that regards how do you classify diabetes onset less than 6 months you think of neonatal do imaging and then genetic studies if the imaging is not clear you want to know whether pancreas is formed or not what is the better test uh, navin in this setting which test will give you pancreatic information so we can do a stool elastase or we can do yeah. ct so fecal elastase is the best marker because even on ct sometimes pancreas is not very clearly visible now if the onset is after 6 months of age whether there is a decayed presentation yes and the child is needing insulin this is type 1 don't worry so decayed onset insulin requirement don't do any work up if you do not need insulin now it may be honeymoon phase for some time but maybe one year two years still not requirement then you do a gad antibody if the antibody is positive this is type 1 if it is negative go for modi on the other hand if there is no decay and there is no obesity so now this is a confusing picture this can be modi or it can be lada because it may evolve over time so don't leave it do a gad antibody if the antibody is positive this is lada if it is negative go for a genetic study in that perspective and if there is obesity no ketosis child is stable this is most likely a type 2 diabetes so this is how you classify so don't do investigations in everybody you just classify like that we'll take the case again the first case 16 year old polyuria what we found here was that he actually presented with dk but the problem was that because he was obese we thought that this could be non type 1 diabetes and stopped and the problem happened that he presented with dk later on so if we just go by our algorithm that we have discussed we say that this child has hyperglycemia age is 1 to 18 he presented with dka he does not require insulin you should have got a gad antibody done and that could have prevented you from developing this dka second case the same 18 year old girl with increased urine output and in this case was labeled as type 1 diabetes even though there was no dka and was a lean individual gad was negative and turned out to be a, a, a modi sort of a form so if you look here again you have to look at in somebody who doesn't have a dka and who is non obese the key parameter there is to look at gad antibody if it is negative go for a modi testing which becomes important in that setting 16 year old boy with obesity there is hyperglycemia hba1c is 8.3 ketone is 0.8 bmi 32 acanthosis present what do you think here uh, sign most likely type 2 sir so this is already obesity without dk so again more than one year obese no dk this is most likely type 2 diabetes in that setting now because the hba1c is not very high you can start on metformin alone in this setting and finally you have got this 18 year old girl with obesity similar picture but hba1c is 10 mild ketosis so what will you do here sir is the patient uh, also having also ketones are present so will require insulin so better to start insulin maybe basal insulin rather than a proper basal bolus for type 1 so this is how the algorithm will tell you 1 to 18 years dk is not there per se but there is ketosis child is obese you have to consider that maybe basal insulin will be required in this setting so this is way you can classify so essentially what you are looking at is three things the age 1 year 1 to 18 years second is with regards to dk yes no obesity yes no just three things and most of the things come out from there and then you have to do two things uh, gad antibody and genetic study that's it so this is how we we have put our algorithm from there this is a one month old male child that presented with failure a uh, failure to thrive and hyperglycemia for three consecutive day birth weight is 2.2 kg 
at one month of age, weight is 2.4 kg. That was failure to thrive. No, the patient presented with no decay. Patient, according to uh, these criteria, diagnosed uh, diabetes. Patient shifted on insulin. So when you have this patient who presented around one month of age hmm. without decay, what do you think? Is it more likely to be a transient form or a permanent form? It more goes to the permanent form because if, uh, if transient form is there, that it likely to present in first week of first in peak week of life. So first week of life is more severe. Symptoms. More severe, uh, that associated with decay most. Yes. Uh, birth history is normal. USG done. That was normal. Uh, HbA1c is 10.2. RBC is 412 milligram per deciliter. Patient was on glargine and lentus. Patient re uh, referred, uh, referred for uh, recurrent hypoglycemia, hy hypoglycemia on insulin. Uh, so how do you manage these people before we go ahead with regards to the overall further workup and everything? How do you manage if he comes to you for the first time? What insulin will you suggest? How will you suggest the diet and other aspects? Uh, first, we have to uh, we have to start we have to see patient was in decay or not. My, my patient was not in decay, so we have to give the uh, the basal insulin. We have to uh, uh, dose is 0.01 to 0 0.05 international unit per kg per. So it's mainly you focus on the basal, hmm. and then if it is high, you give reactive hmm. bolus. It is one of the most challenging forms of diabetes that you will see lipodystrophy and this. These are the two most difficult ones. Hmm. So basically, what you do here is that you basically start with the basal. And then you tighten it because you don't know how much the child is going to feed from the mother, mm. how much sugars are going up. But I think the good part here was that genetic study was done. Uh, yeah. uh, genetic study for potassium ATPase defects and that came positive for potassium ATPase defect. Uh, now part of management, patient shifted uh, from the insulin. We gradually tapered insulin and we shifted patient on uh, glibenclimate, sulfonylurea. That start, starting dose is 0.2 mg per kg per day. That was in two divided doses. Strict RBS weight monitoring was done. So this child was actually admitted in the hospital. So it's always it's a difficult process. So mm -hmm. don't try to do it on an OPD okay. basis because they may go into decay. So always admit them in the hospital. So he was in the NICU for four or five days, NICU or PICU. And then the sugars were monitored gradually. Remember that there will be some time for beta cells to, for the potassium channels to work. So it is not going to happen at a low dose. So whenever you start treatment, you know that you have to give, you have to push the engine, start the engine. And that's why you have to go up at a high dose. So what happened was that 0.2, we had to go up to 0.81 milligram per kg. But as happens, let's say when you talk about Bata syndrome with Indomethacin, there again you will see there will be a sudden effect. And then suddenly you will go into hypoglycemia. So once you have reached that threshold, the levels will go down. So this child required a high dose and then we were able to come down in that regards. How do you give libenclamide? Uh, sir, we have to uh, uh, dissolve uh, in water, and, water uh, and give accordingly. Uh, doses, sometimes you have to give three times a day as well. Mm -hmm. In adults, it is supposed to be a long acting. Mm -hmm. So single dose may be good enough. But in neonatal period and beyond, you may have to give up to three doses also because we have seen patients who go up in the afternoons. Three doses may be a good enough mm -hmm. in that regard. So we went up to one milligram per kg mm -hmm. in this child. And how would you know that his uh, pancreas is now functioning well? What test will tell you? We have to do C-peptide. Yeah, and so of course, after, glucose after, will after, tell you, HbA1c will tell you, but if you want to really document, C-peptide will be a good mark. After the one month of, uh, one month of uh, follow-up, the patient C-peptide is normal. Mm -hmm. Uh, strict RBS weight monitoring was done. No uh, episode of hypoglycemia after uh, shifted on sulfonylurea. Sugar is well controlled. Uh, fo and follow up, sugar monitoring was done regularly. That uh, And glibenclamide dose you know, gradually we increase up to the 0.8 mg per kg per day. Maintaining RBS well, normal RBS on medication, weight gain and growth is normal. No any complication. Let's suppose this child was not improving clinically because his sugars are now normal, but he is neurologically not better. Mm -hmm. He has muscle weakness. He has got uh, developmental delay. What do you think would be the problem? Sir, we have to uh, think uh, in perspective of uh, Dan syndrome, uh, like that uh, uh, KIR gene mutation. So the potassium channelopathy mm -hmm. is also going to affect the neurons mm -hmm. and the muscles. Mm -hmm. So this child responded well which means it is not that severe. Mm -hmm. It's just the severity because ATP again becomes important for everybody. On follow-up, uh, follow-up after five months, HbA1c is normal, C-peptide level is normal. 
now take home message uh, regarding this case a newborn presented after second week of life with no any pan pancreatic abnormality with hyperglycemia is neonatal uh, diabetes before 6 month of age neonatal diabetes after second week is uh, or second week of life is due to the potassium atp channel defect treatment of choice is sulfonylurea starting dose of levenclamide should uh, it 0.2 mg per kg per day in two, two, two divided doses we can increase the dose up to the 0.8 to 1 mg per kg per day according to blood sugar and we have to gradually taper the insulin it all should be done in hospital premises early identification and appropriate treatment improves the weight and growth so i think this was a very interesting case which you presented a similar case it was a eight year, eight day old girl with birth weight 1800 grams. And what happened in this setting was that she had lost weight, was looking sick, sugar of 425, very high, ketone positive, and dehydrated. So, what do you think? Which form of diabetes are we looking at, Sian, here? This will be most likely a transient form of diabetes present because very early. very early with severe and decay. And she was managed, there was an omphalocele. So, this is most likely a PLGLA1 defect, which is basically a imprinting problem, which is there. So, again, very early onset, severe decay, likely transient. Later onset, mildish, not mildish, but no decay, more likely to be potassium ATP. But these are not. 100%. You can have both of them. If you have very severe diabetes, it tends to improve. And then after a few years, go back again. If it is milder potassium ATP channel defects, you will have transient one to two months. It will come back again in three years or four years. If you have very severe potassium channel defect, they will continue and you will give sulfonylurea. They will respond dramatically. This